Gomera Radio Entertainment. Today's show is brought to you by Personal Capital. For a free trial of Personal Capital, just go to MikeOmeraShow.com and click the Personal Capital banner. Or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Again, click the Personal Capital banner on MikeOmeraShow.com or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOmeraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oscar. Yes, sir. How was your weekend? Ah, uh, boring. Really? Yeah. But we're here and it's exciting. I'm happy to be back. Because we have someone waiting. Ah, and here he is. Hi. Hi, uh, Larry. Uh, Hi, it's Lay King. You must have gotten right on a plane because I saw you on the Today Show this morning. How's that? I said you must have gotten on a plane because I saw you on the Today Show this morning. Sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a. Uh, he used to be on CNN. He's not anymore. Now he's on <laughs> R- the RT, which yeah. is the Russian network. Hi, Risky. hi, folks. It's Lay King. And also, he's on Hulu. Yeah. And Aura TV. Yeah. Here's everybody's friend, Larry King. Hi, Larry. Hey, hey there, boy. Yeah, great, boy. Great to be on the Michael Mary show. Um, I'm, I'm here because I'm back. I couldn't stay away, and I'm happy to but be you re- back. But you retired. What? Uh, ostensibly, you retired from CNN. Right? Sure, I didn't like it. I, I, I miss. I miss what you what? I miss being in the action. Yeah, I really miss being. Whose, you know, whose yeah. decision was it to leave CNN? Ah, uh, mine exclusively. I was tired. <laughs> really? I, you were well, not asked to leave. Let me let me tell you something, Rob. Yeah, I I when I <laughs> I don't like to talk about me. Mm, right. I don't like to use the word I. Uh, there's no I never learned anything by by talking. Is you and just I'm said not I. That, I? What you just said? I I yeah, never you, learned anything. You just said me. Yeah, sure, but but I, I, just let me tell you, let me tell you something about myself. Okay, let's it's talk not, about you. Hey, I want to make sure right. you understand it's not it's not about me. I understood. It's Are you, never is about this, I. Is this helpful advice for the young up and coming interviewer? Too many broadcasters. What they do is they talk about themselves and they make themselves part of the story. For example, I don't do that. Willie Geist. Willie Geist. All the time. <laughs> Smelled wonderful. Really? Smelled like a field of daisies. <laughs> wow. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, he did. M- Mr. King. Yeah, hi, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Ray. I just want to compliment you. You've done real well. And I know you've had obstacles thrown in your way. Like what, 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 of, what obstacles? Yeah, what you know, the, the obstacles that uh, like, people get. Like what? My you know, the, yeah, sure. What? Yeah, you, you know, the, the, uh, your people are doing well. Oh, thank you. His people? Well, kind of... just 20 years ago, they weren't in, in broadcast studios. 20 years ago, they were out in, uh, in, in lettuce fields. What about <laughs> what about Freddie Prinze? Huh? Freddie Prinze. Freddie Prinze? Yeah. That was 20 years ago. That was more than 20. Strike that. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to ask you about uh, radio and TV. Yeah, it's two, not not what it used to be. Two different <laughs> two different boy. mediums. <laughs> yeah, not what it used to be. If it, uh, if someone was going to go into either business, either business, sure. What business would you suggest they go into? I'd say radio. Hold it, you said I. You said you don't like to say I. I don't believe. It, you, you, I don't you believe. You can't do what I do right. by making it about me. But you're making it all about you. I'm, you're doing an interview with me. Yes, you. I'm saying when I'm interviewing someone, I'm not going to make it about I and me. You're, all you talk about is I and me. You're interviewing me, so right. it's about I and me when but I'm being said, interviewed. Did you not say you don't use the word I? Why are you being so difficult on me? Uh, on you? you I, there you go again. Well, you're talking about me. All the right. subject happens to be me. Right <laughs> now, the subject... The sh- Hold on, I got oh, cotton no, coming out of my mouth. The to... subject happens to be me right now. So if the subject is me, I can talk about I. Okay, how about how about this? Yeah. How about Oscar ask the question again? It's a great question. Sure. Thank and you. you answer it without saying I or me. I'll do that. Okay, Oscar. I'll rise. <laughs> what I'll do yes. is I'll rise to the occasion. Uh, excellent. So let me just get this straight. Let me just write it down on okay. a piece of paper. Please. Oscar's going to ask a question about You're right. Me. Are you still using paper and pen? Yeah, no <laughs> pen. Don't you have like an iPad or I've anything? I've got a pencil. How about an iPad This pencil mini? was given to me by Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I know why you use paper and pen. Hold on. Because I... I just pe- picked my head. Oh, don't. No. No, I got to no, pick no, my no, head. No, 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 no. Oh, that feels so no. good, boy. I saw you on the TV today. Got to pick my head. What's with the freckles? I got... They're not, they're not freckles. They're scabs. You're splotchy, man. I was at uh, <laughs> I was at the Beverly Hills Diner. Yeah? I was having, I was having my boiled egg by myself <laughs> in a corner reading the paper. Mm. I was in the corner... And I, I said to my, uh, I said to no, my waitress. No, you're saying I again. 
Because he hasn't asked the question yet. Oh, so we're not doing the game yet. So the waitress comes over. <laughs> right? Is she I hot? Say, waitress, what's this in my boiled egg? I'd oh, already chopped it oh, up. Oh, Larry. I'd already chopped it up. She no. said, Larry, that's one of your scabs. You thought it was maybe a bacon bit? <laughs> Mr. King. I thought it was a bacon bit. <laughs> now, when you... I know why I you... I thought use... it was a piece of crust from somebody else's toast. <laughs> when you're using the paper and pen, Gross. is that because you don't use an iPad because it starts with I? I don't like iPads. <laughs> I don't like the whole the whole crazy goofy thing. What about an if iPod? If I want a television, I'll go and sit and watch a television. If I want to bring a television with me, I'll bring the television with me. But I don't want to bring the television and have the television with me all the time. That's the way I roll. <laughs> That's how you roll. Hi, it's Lay King. Okay, Oscar, do you want to do the all question what's, again? What's the game again? The game is. You have to <laughs> I love good games. Well, this will have to do. You don't sure. like the letter I, but you're working really respectively on the internet. You can't do. A show making it all about I and me. If you do, you're never going to get the. What I like to do is ask questions. Are we playing the game yet? <laughs> um, no, not with the scab. On. No oh, more bacon. I got a scab. Studio. I got no a scab. He looks like a. No, no I got a bleeder. <laughs> Someone put bacon <laughs> on your head. I got a bleeder. Where's my st Where's my styptic pencil? <laughs> do you carry one with you? For my head. <laughs> For the top of my head. Okay. Thank you. So Oscar's going to ask a question, yeah. and you're going to entertain the question without saying yeah, I, boy. me, or mine. Sure. You can't say I, me, or mine. Yeah. All right. No, with the scratching. Oh, just I got them all over my face. Would it be too much to ask for you to put your hands in your pockets? No. <laughs> Sean Southwick King, my beautiful bride, yeah. she tells me I ought to wear mittens. <laughs> oh, 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 like, like a baby. No well, I don't clip my nails. Well, oh. It's too tedious. Let me see them. Uh, there they are. Oh, my God. When I clipped my nails the last time, the top of my finger just came clean off. <laughs> so it's, risk, it's a risk factor. Yeah, so I, had, I was in Band-Aids for like three weeks. They look like talons. <laughs> yeah, they're my talons. I right now, hey, put me in a big top of a telephone pole <laughs> next to a lake, and I'll jump down and catch a fish. <laughs> All evil. right, so what's the game again? The game is this. All right. He will ask you a question, and you will answer the question without saying I, me, or mine. Okay. Okay. Let go. Shoot, Oscar. Radio or television broadcasting careers? Which one is better? Radio, TV, good. <laughs> Radio, TV, questions, good. <laughs> ask questions, good, instead of not asking questions. Make sure interview subject know that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can't do this, S. It's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. We have your dog. Hey, look, he's trained. Chic. Uh-huh. Speak. Hi there. <gasps> Did that dog just say hi there? Oh, yes. Bruh! My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. What? My master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk. Squirrel! My master is good and smart. It's not possible. Oh, it is because my master is smart. <gasps> cool. What do these do, boy? Hey, would you cut a cradle contigo? I use... Russell, don't touch that. It could be radioactive or something. I am a great tracker. My pack sent me on a special mission all by myself. Have you seen a bird? I want to find one, and I've been on the scent. I am a great tracker. Did I mention that? <laughs> hey, that is a bird. I have never seen one up close, but this is a bird. May I take your bird back to camp as my prisoner? Yes, yes, take it. And on the way, learn how to bark like a real dog. I can bark. <coughs> and here's howling. Can we keep him, please, please, please? No. But it's a talking dog. It's the Michael Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Speedwack, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. Oh, the ink is black, the paper's white. Hello, it's together. Anyway, uh, interesting song choice for today's show, Rob. Uh, Nothing by accident, Mike. From Studio 1K in the Pfeifferplex Broadcast Center, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. We are downloaded worldwide over 18 and a half million 
million times. So many. And powered by Encore Insurance. We're at MikeOmeraShow.com, 102.9 FM WTNT in Washington, D.C., and the mighty 1630 KCJJ in Iowa. Today is the big day. It is Monday, July yeah. 15, 2013. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really the big day. Nothing's happened yet. It's a oh. big day. We'll get to that in just a Mike, second. Mike, it's a big day. Every day's a big day. Our uh, program today is brought to you by Signs by Tomorrow. If you are looking for an affordable and dramatic way to visually get your message to your customers, then look no further than Signs by Tomorrow of Manassas. Signs by Tomorrow offers a tremendous variety of signs and graphic services that will get your business noticed. Custom signs, digital printing, custom graphics, they do it all at Signs by Tomorrow of Manassas. Signs by Tomorrow has indoor and outdoor signs. They can wrap your vehicles, and that's not putting it in a sandwich wrap. That's actually Mike, I hate to jump in and interrupt you. Yes, go right ahead. Ten minutes. Now. Thank you very much. Not I at all. It. Signs by Tomorrow is great. They wrapped our studio. And if you're watching us on the Ustream, you can absolutely see our logos engulfing the studio. It's wonderful. That's right. They can do your trade show display or your booth or your event signs. All your custom sign printing solutions are covered. Call Kevin. We know this guy. He's a good guy. He nice guy. Was studio. he the older guy or the younger guy? He's the older guy. Nice guy. 703-530-0070 or visit signsbytomorrow.com slash Manassas. Experienced people. State-of-the-art technology. Cost effective signs by tomorrow of Manassas, your visual message specialist. So Great. We thank them for all their good work. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Another hello. weekend. No baby. And Mike, you know what? No baby. You know what's on everybody's mind? What? Will this be the week of the royal birth? The yes. world excitedly awaiting. <laughs> That's what they want to know. That's what I told Shannon this weekend when I was like, I don't care about that royal baby. I couldn't believe Natalie Morales was outside in your house this morning. You know, when they talk about your lady being in a delicate condition, yes. let me simply say, Say, yes, she is. And she is in a delicate condition emotionally at this stage of the game. Would you say fragile? Uh, not at all. Not fragile. But she is delicate and she is sensitive. And the fact is, when you get excited about the, the big thing for her, she's on maternity leave now. It's right. official. The big thing when does about yours start? Mine, never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never on leave, period. But the, the thing is, uh, her big thing today, she gets up Aww. early, she scrubs herself all up, she gets her little bun in the oven t-shirt, and I Aww. felt for her today, because yeah. she, uh, last week, begins the process, about Monday, about a week ago, finding out about getting the car seat installed, which you are supposed to do at either the fire department or the police department. Yes. And you know what? Even 10 years ago, it became a major, major hassle, where car seats don't just slip in and clip in anymore they have to be leveled and there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of oh, science at play. you yeah. have to do it properly a and lot of legally. times they use the uh those pool noodles oh i don't know if the fantastic what are pool noodles you know those like long i think i left a few of those when hey, i was like hey. six or seven uh, years old in the kitty pool Paul <laughs> spackler they're my, made of foam there, there's yeah. my there's my pool noodle no but you know they're usually <laughs> brightly colored like yeah. long sticks of almost like a styrofoam yep. and they'll cut them up and they can use them to level the seat oh i never knew you had to do that oh it's it's a hassle hey where's my pool noodle of course that's only for the first baby the second baby you just put in the you just put in the trunk yeah, like that noodle never did anything for us <laughs> you know what i saw yesterday i'm driving through the uh, streets of the zit and uh right in front of me on the lovely day side, for a drive looked like it was either a family coming home or going to a vacation you had uh the the two dads that appeared to be in the front seat right and in the back seat you had an older lady another older lady and then an older teenager and then you had two like little kids that were in the back of an old crown vic not a crown vic a grand marquee station wagon because you wagon. never see station wagons anymore and i had this amazing flashback as i looked in the back of this i said i remember when we used to sit there if you had a uh, a station wagon that was like that with those seats yeah mm -hmm. it was ultra cool and that was like the luxury luxury oh, yeah. luxury station wagon and they were sitting there and i think they were on their way to the vacation because this little girl was sitting in the back seat and she was so was she waving to people it was just she was yeah. so happy to be back there yeah we're cool because you know they're getting stared at because it's a throwback to the 60s Do you know where, cool. where my dad used to put me and my cousin wes Where's i'm that? really surprised i cheated death my entire childhood right do you remember in the back of the original volkswagen bugs there was like a cubby hole Oh, like, like for the the trunk was in the uh, well, the trunk was oh in the front. The engine God. was in the back. Okay, the engine but was behind in the back. this back seat. There was like an indention where you could put like books. I guess he used to put me and my cousin back there, like sitting on the floor. Yes. <laughs> 
Oh my God! And if I, so he would travel with you on a Volkswagen Bug. Yeah, not on a long trip. I hope I, they all seemed long when yeah. you're in the cubby hole. <laughs> I don't know. It was probably just a false church, but it seemed like a you, journey of a lifetime. You could put an amp back there, or Rob and his cousin. <laughs> yeah, me and Wes. A, he, he, we don't care. You know, hold on tight to each other. So this situation is. Uh, she gets excited about the fact that it's car seat day, and this is a real tangible step. Yeah, because you're preparing. For the ride home from right. the hospital. And, and she, oh. she calls last week, and suddenly she is informed by our local police department. Great mm. job, fellas. Manassas PD. You are not she pleased says, with them today. She says that uh, the fire department uh, should do it. She calls the police department. and said, no, the fire department doesn't do it anymore. What? Now, oh. that's right, right there. Right when you start getting, we don't do these they very simple mundane... And so she says, okay, uh, do they do it at the police department? Yes, she said, but you have to call someone. So they're, they're huge on this at our local police department. Yeah, I have Farming you down six different levels. Oh, I'm not saying a, a word about people. your local police department. So the thing they is. They pull me over too much. And so. <laughs> Mayberry police. We call them, and she gets a, a, you know, the person says, you have to talk to this person. Because they're all about their departments. And then she gets the voicemail of that of course. person because that person's not there. And, and I'm then, guessing there's escalating joy every time someone is able to send her off because right. it's no longer their responsibility. Exactly. And that's so common in an industry. Well, I won't say common among police. I'll just say I've seen it before in organizations where people are more satisfied right. with being done with it than they are with actually helping you. Well, the situation is she wants to finally make contact with a human being, and she finally makes contact with a human being. And I am in the room when she makes the call. I remember I was a witness to uh -huh. it. So the call goes something like this. Hi, my name's uh, Carla O'Mara. Hi, I, this uh, is I uh, Officer told, Car Seat. I was told that I call this number to uh, to see about having my car, car seat installed by someone at the department. She said, uh, on the other end, she said, you have to make an appointment. She said, okay, I'll make an appointment. When's the first appointment? How about Monday morning at 9 o'clock? She said, okay, Monday morning at 9 o'clock. It's actually I'll ideal. Down, and it's perfect. And she gets excited this morning because yeah. she's going to go down there and she's like, okay, and she's got the car seat and she's all happy. I get a call like an hour later. She gets over to the police department after incidentally talking to uh, the person who sets up an appointment to get this done, hmm. the officer, this woman, comes out of the police department and says, oh, we don't install them. We just see if you've done it correctly. Oh, Now, I was sitting in the room God. when she said, you need an appointment I, for that? No, why would you need an appointment for yeah. that? You, 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 you could, you, they could see do it from the window. You can <laughs> see a cop on the street, but the fact is, during the process of speaking to an individual no and setting up an appointment, when you said, I am setting up an appointment to have my... Why wouldn't anyone have said that? Well, because maybe they're just not doing their jobs the right way. Yeah. That's really the only uh, conclusion I get to it. And they were also the same people that shared uh, with Carla that the fire department uh, doesn't do it anymore. And Carla found out that wasn't true when she called me from the fire department where she was getting ready to have it installed by the person who was going to do it for her at the fire department. Nothing better you know, in the world than really, a Really, man? What has happened? Yeah. Do your jobs if you're if this is a legal requirement and right. people are trying to follow the law and you're dicking them around for God's sake. I mean, really, it just it's so it's so indicative of the way we all are yeah. and, we, and where our priorities are. You know, here's a law-abiding person that goes in there wants to do things the right way, and she gets completely dicked around in the the ninth month of her pregnancy and and because that she's been off. You at should that. be pissed off. Because I'm getting all pissed off at all that the way the way pregnant women are treated. I sure all she's really? trying to do, yeah, yeah big time. What Else. Just, I mean, little little things about uh, doors and seating oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, if you see somebody who is out to here pregnant, I think you just be a little bit more mindful sure. of, uh, you know, of what their Carla had said it herself. She said, I'm going to be so much more aware yeah. of, uh, of women that are in that condition. And it just gets to be, you know, we, we roll along with our lives mm -hmm. and we don't think about anything. We don't really pay much attention to it. So true. And, uh, you know, so hopefully she's on her way. She's getting that done. And I'm feeling a little of the tension. To now. Well, sure. Oh, I because feel it, it now. It's <laughs> here in the studio. <laughs> it's true. I feel a little that uh, that tension right now because it's frustrating to me. It really is. Well, you know, all she's trying to do is do the right thing. Right. And all she did was follow the instructions of the police force. Mm -hmm. And apparently, that's not quite good enough. Right. For and she could have been a complete. Uh, I guess she could have been disrespectful to the process and just stopped by a firehouse or right. stopped by the police station. Say, hey, can you take care of this? Mm -hmm. And then. 
Odds are she would have been treated better than what just happened. Yeah, but she went through every channel, called right. every like phone number, guy. set up an appointment, and got that done. And it's just a, so did she mention just how a she tiny was, little detail. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Did she mention how she was treated at the firehouse? Uh, I, she hasn't been back yet. I talked to her right before showtime. She was mm. over there, okay. and somebody was going to take They're care of it. They're showing her the fire truck. But, hey, but here it is. Hose. The way it is, 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 you know, I said, well, I haven't looked at the thing, and I haven't seen whether it's a, a cluster F to get the thing. So you tell me well, it is right now, to get them done right. The, uh, for the first, I guess it's six months when it's rear facing mm -hmm. it'll probably be in the center of your back seat unless things have changed in eight years facing the back of the car okay and because of that they're going to have to use something to make it sit level right because it's sort of tilted mm -hmm. and it, it is it's a cluster and then yeah. there's a all cars are different as far as whether or not you're going to use a seat belt or sometimes they have a harness sort of thing built into the seat mm -hmm. and it varies car to car i was never able to do it right do right. you have a kind that is a one-piece seat or a base with a detachable got a base with a detachable seat that's the one we're going to use because that's the one where you just press the button and take the kid out be very careful why that was responsible for a very bad incident with me and Ryan. Oh Day. my God! Now you're gonna freak me out. I'm what sure they've the been. What? I'm sure they've been improved using them. it. Oh my! What I'm sure happened? they've improved okay. them. What happened? Well, the handle, you know, it tilts. Yeah. Right. So when you pick it up, you can put it out of the way. But then when you pick it up, you move it to an upright position. Yeah. Handle the baby. Starting just make sure. No, no, no. Just make sure the handle is clicked into position at the top of the steps. Or the baby strapped in. Well, at the top of the steps. I think I might have remembered this. Did oh, the baby yes. go flying out of your car seat? No, no, it was in the seat, but it was in the home. But it, he he went down all twelve steps, and he was pissed. Oh my god! Yeah, because the handle wasn't like gish, 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 it wasn't gish, clicked gish. into spot. Yeah, it yeah. was the handle's fault. Robert. <laughs> Oh my God! No, oh absolutely! My God. No, no, no! Absolutely, oh operator error. The baby, the baby. Absolutely, yeah. my fault. But yeah. I do know this. You know how, and you'll learn this, and you probably remember this. From I've your been a girls. father. So. Yeah, you remember from the. Girls. I am a father. What am I talking about? There, there's a different cry for like hunger. There's a cry when they're 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 hurt, and there's a cry Help. when they're mad. Right. He started a mad cry at about step number six. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was wickedly pissed. I don't know if it's Joel or another listener, your buddy Joel, that won the uh, Apprentice contest. Yeah, Joel Rogers. I think Joel might have given me earplugs. Really? <laughs> which which I think oh you're gonna which hear. I might seriously sneak. So, yeah. Good night, honey. You just put them in there. Anyway. What if you have a quiet baby, though? Uh, well, you know, we've got the monitoring system that's uh, all yeah, ready Yeah, but to you go. could be blessed with just like a cool, quiet, calm baby. Yeah, and by saying that, we probably just blown no, that. I'm I think sorry. it's probably Well, I mean, yeah. look at the dad. You're so superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> you are so superstitious. Yeah, I am superstitious. And you know I that... called Mike yesterday just about work, and yeah. he's, like, he's like, hold on a second. The Red Sox are playing. Are you going to bring yeah. me good luck? Right. <laughs> and I was like, after your mother effed me, I just said, all right, goodbye. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They lost. Uh, they're, they're driving me nuts right now. Let's get to the issue of the day. Yes. Uh, we have to talk about it because everybody's talking about it. Um, and I've got some feelings about it uh, that uh, might surprise some people, but... Uh, you know, there was a big disagreement in the O'Mara household, and I know that I'm going to probably go against uh, a lot of our listening uh, audience uh, with this, but the fact is the Zimmerman trial is uh, is over. He was found not guilty. What? As I expected, he would be found not guilty. And uh, we watched quite did a you, bit of this over the weekend. Did you think, I can't remember our predictions on Friday, did you think it was going to be manslaughter? But not yeah. murder. I thought. Probably, or did you think it would be Scott? Free? I don't remember the predictions about it. I don't manslaughter. Because uh, I think we all went manslaughter. Manslaughter. Didn't we? I thought it really was ultimately, you know, reasonable doubt. If you think that there is a reasonable doubt that uh, you know this would be something premeditated, where. I, I just think you've got two people out there, not any eyewitnesses to the situation, and reasonable doubt as to whether it was self-defense or not, reasonable doubt whether it was murder or not, reasonable doubt whether it was manslaughter, and there's tremendous doubt in this case. And I think it's unfortunate. Here's the tragedy of the situation. The tragedy is that a 17-year-old kid was killed. Right. I think it's horrible. It's, it's an unspeakable tragedy. I think that, uh, you know, it's so funny what we go into the streets, what we march into the streets about. We march into the streets when the media creates a situation where we're going to march into the streets. They street. were predicting the the demonstrations uh, by th on Thursday. When you they have, said this is going to happen, and it's almost like the people of our country feel the necessi feel it necessary to live up to what the media said is going to happen. And it seems to me that this situation, when you look at the law and you look at the way the law is structured, Unfortunately, it's the laws that resulted in the not guilty verdict, not 
not the the situation where the jury getting it wrong or race or any of that. I, I think I okay. can understand the frustration that people have. Oh, with I sure this can too. And the f- way that but so many re- people said they saw it coming down the pike, but also they have to understand that reasonable doubt is what our justice system is built on. And here's where people are going to get pissed at me. Here we go. Okay. Because ultimately, when you've got the guy out there, what prevents this tragedy from happening? Gun. If the guy doesn't have a legal gun right. on his belt. Right. Period. No. Will you hear I, that? I disagree. Of course you do, because you're a moron. No, you no. Do. And I'll tell you why, because the fact is, is you shoot him without a, a gun. Uh, guns. I'm just guns, a guns, guns, guns. The gun culture. The guy shouldn't have gone out of his car. The g- guy shouldn't have had a gun. He the should guy have gone out of his car. Why I can say guy... the same thing to the point you're making now. Why does the guy have a gun? Because that's what he wants to do. If he right. wants to be on the... And if we want to do it, let's do it. He's not qualified no, to I'm have just a firearm. He, one, he can legally have it. Exactly. Yes. And why don't we? But we're not in the streets about that. We're, not in, we're never in the streets. The gun. What happened when those kids in Newtown were killed? Nothing. No law. Congress completely caved on the law. We have people in this country that are still going bat s about guns. I'm simply saying this simple fact. Yes. One of the facts in there, agree with you about the car thing. If he doesn't get out of the car, that doesn't happen. True. Another fact, if he doesn't have that gun on his arm, well, I can, on his, I on his can side, agree yeah. with you. That's, that does, is a fact. And also, it does. doesn't happen. I can't speak to what was in George Zimmerman's mind. I can't speak to what was in his heart. I can't speak to whether he was a cop wannabe. Right. I really don't know that. Some of the facts would indicate that might be true. Some of the facts might be indic- indicative of the fact that maybe he's got a racial predisposition to this. Some of the facts say that maybe he was a profiler. But we don't know any of those things definitively. What do we know? We know that he was carrying a concealed firearm. And when the police Period. told him not to get out of the car, he did. Right, exactly. True. And you, once again, though, why is this so... Why are we so protective of firearms? And what almost, does it really do for us, And Oscar? the angle what is almost it re- underreported. What does it really, really do... What does it really do? How does it improve our lives? Really improve our lives for all these people to be running around packing guns? I'm asking you a question. I'm not trying to even argue. I'm just asking, what does it really do? Well, for me... I'd like to know that you don't have one in today. No, I, and I. You know what? I would. I think within the next year, I'm going to actively work to get one because I found right. out you can get one in D.C. It's just a bitch to do. Now, you even with the knowledge, yes. that statistically, you are much more likely to hurt yourself or someone close to you Love than you one. are to protect yourself. Yeah. You, do you agree with that? I agree. You still want to do it? Well, I no. I, it's not because I, it's not something that's going to be fun for me. Okay, but you, st- but you still want to do it. But I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I want to. I want to do it simply because I. I there is a part of me that knows now that I feel comfortable around a firearm mm-hmm. because I've gone to shooting ranges. I've been safe about it. I've, right. I've handled different weapons. There's See, a- that scares me even saying that. I mean, by saying that I feel comfortable, I would never feel comfortable around a firearm. Oh, I, I never, never used to be until I, mean, I was around it and I knew how to pick it up safely and actually load a magazine and, mm-hmm. and make sure the safety was on. I, now, I've shot at a range as well. I've yes. shot in a range. But I don't, think I, w- I don't think I've ever felt or would ever feel comfortable around firearms and it didn't come easy it, let me let me get back to the the point yeah we're getting we're, we're we're heading into the streets today yes you're hearing civil rights the right of a young man to walk home to to his house again the the great gun situation here it's still a firearm where people are killed every day and it gets back to guns it and does. people are going to be so pissed off at me that i'm bringing up guns again like, but i but I i'm not mad guns. at you that's a fact Okay. Right there. I get right. that, right? Mm-hmm. But I also get that the guy and, – and look, I, I don't think anybody won here. I think the state did – it was the state's burden to prove otherwise right. that this guy went out of his way to, to – to, and he went out of his way to actually take Trayvon Martin down, and they didn't. And I don't think it was clear. There was there, It wasn't beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm-hmm. And as I sit there, the only thing I go back to is that this guy won when he's on with the police. They say, don't get out of your car. Stay right. in your car. He gets out of his car and pursues him. Mm-hmm. Once he pursues him, what happens afterwards clearly is still up in there, in my eye. And I think it always will be. Yeah. I don't think we're going to We'll continue this discussion when we come back uh, because there is a lot of it. It just, uh, I think where, where I want to go with this is what we tend to get ramped up about. Right. And how much of that is our real choice. We'll take a break when we come back. Was that? A lot, I thought we'd have more time. It's party trained by the Gap Band. Okay. A lot of times we have a 30-second ramp up. Really? Yeah. Am I... Uh, no, you're fine. We're I'm, fine. Am I, 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 
you're a- you said you were going to cue me. I've got uh, right now, correct me, twenty eight. Would that be Perfect, would that be yeah. right? Thank you. I know we'll get to, to the, about thirty. Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show. Uh, this portion of the program is brought to you by Personal Capital. I have told you about the amazing new application, Personal Capital. With just one click on one screen, you can see your net worth and assets, and more importantly, track how you are doing. Knowledge is power, and with Personal Capital, you will know what to do and what you have and how it's doing and how much it's costing you to manage it because the managers at Personal Capital in many, many cases charge so much less than the people you may be using Mm -hmm. and they're good at it. They have all the knowledge and expertise and don't pay your money managers way too much when they're not going to do anything for you. Personal Capital You're paying them to lose money for you. Don't do that. Go to personalcapital.com slash TMOS for a free trial and start taking control of your money today. Know what you have and retire sooner. That's the whole enchilada. Do it. By clicking the banner ad at Show dot com or going to personalcapital.com slash TMOS. I really, really hate to feel the way I feel because I would love to be uh, manipulated by the media in this country and think that certain things are a certain way. I think that we re- you talk about demonstrations in the street, and thank God most of them are not violent. I right. think a few batteries and rocks thrown at the police in oh, Los nothing Angeles. Nothing like Rodney King, though. Nothing like no. Rodney King, but... We still, you know, uh, how could you not expect people to take to the streets when the media coverage was telling them basically to take to the streets? Yeah, Let me explain, last folks. Week. This is how the media tells you to go, go out and protest in the streets. We really hope that we don't have anybody <laughs> getting violent and taking to the streets. That's telling people take to the streets. Yeah, last Come Thursday on. night when they're saying, well, the people in Sanford are right. laying in wait and the policemen are preparing for anything that could happen. And it's great theater and they get the cameras ready to go and they do that. but Chanting by, and everything. Yeah, but by and large, you know, you see a congressional hearing with the uh, families of those kids killed in Newtown. You know, here's what you hear on the news. Yeah, maybe one story, but boy, if there's some oh, angry, no. if there's some angry people that are shooting, I'm talking about after the fact. I'm talking about it well was, after the fact. It was everywhere. And no, we, I'm talking about well after yes. the fact when they go down and testify before Congress. Oh no, 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 no. That's but, what I'm talking about. But Mike, about. who are, who's to blame for that? That's the, everybody listening at the media. It's well, the no. people that vote. As far as I'm saying, I'm, I'm not working in an editor's desk. I'm not doing. No, that. no, no. I'm. But look, you, they could. People right now, and this is my this is my humble opinion. We, we go, love to get, we love Pete, to have black on white. We like simple things. But, we like it real easy, and yeah. that's so we don't like it. If there's you, any nuance, you, and the uh, I think that the people, the gun lobby, controls the narrative narrative of that a little bit too. Outside, it goes away outside of the media, and we had this this discussion uh, at length after what happened in Newtown. Right, I said to you, I agree with you with. With uh, the waiting period, right. the background checks, mm-hmm. and I, but I said, and I also said, did to any that, of that go through? By the way, oh, that's right, no. And, but I also said that nothing is going to change. Yeah, and you did, and you were absolutely you were right. right about that. And that sucks. And it sucks. But w- the people that are to blame are the voters. I there is personal responsibility among the public, just as much as there is among the media. I think that we do not educate ourselves as to. I just think we're played. I think we're played. I think we look at that magic box and we behave exactly how that magic box tells us to behave. Nobody, it seems to me, really thinks outside of the box. We think the way we are told that uh, this is an injustice and that, you know, take to the streets. And in many cases it is. I think it's a tragedy that that young man was killed. But I also think that without the proper amount of knowledge... I don't know what was in George Zimmerman's heart. I really, really None don't know. None of us do. I know that he's a dip, a dip ass. I'd yeah, like to well, use a worse, you yeah. know, and I think that, you know, as far as the fact that he put the bullet in that kid's heart, when this could have probably just been a fist fight if he didn't have that weapon on him, right. uh, that sucks. And I hope that he has to suffer for it for the rest mm-hmm. of his life. I really do. But creating this entire race motivated thing that we that we have in this country and focusing it on George Zimmerman no god damn it we need to focus them on we don't we have to have an intelligent discussion about race in this country that we never ever we don't do it we, we left only out do an it, aspect we only do it when it's this hyper competitive situation you left out an aspect okay. you said that we are uh, we're played and i think that's true but yep. the aspect you didn't mention is and oscar's right we allow ourselves to be played that's it we right. allow ourselves yeah. to be played oh, nobody and thinks it, out of the box yeah no it's, it's not easy it's, a, it's in your own choices of programming yeah but, when but, you, but, but also, the news channels you watch right yeah. while you decide to consume Right. What you want to hear, 
I know people that are conservative, and they're uber conservatives. They have new right. friends of mine, right? And every time I go over their house, it's Fox News, right? And that's all it is. And, and Fox I, News I, tells they don't want they don't watch what the what's going to educate them. They watch what's going to reinforce what they already their believe. Yeah, yeah, just like somebody who's a my, liberal will watch MSNBC. And my father watches MSNBC, right? And, and I, I sit there and I bust his chops about it too. Now mm-hmm. I'm on both sides of the aisle, and and I'm conservative in some aspects. And I'm very liberal in others. So am I. But I will say that when when people go to the streets and they are concerned of what is happening in this country and the laws that allow something like this to happen and mm-hmm. a guy to walk away from from someone's life being taken away, right. it's really uh, – that's why this system is the way it is. Now, he wasn't proven without a reasonable doubt that right. he had any – he actually went out of his way to murder this guy. He was premed, premeditated. Wasn't proven. Yeah, it wasn't proven. Right. So he gets to walk. That's he what happens. Why. And and, and my, my simple point yes. about this, and we disagree, and we will always disagree on it, you want to take, take one law that's going to prevent that from happening? Right. Don't allow him to carry a gun. That's right. Make it illegal. It's Make illegal. it illegal. You know what? And I believe that somebody said this uh, o- over the weekend. I was watching some analysis of this. Said if this guy doesn't have a gun, you know what? This is probably at its absolute worst going to be a pretty bad fist fight where one guy gets a little roughed up. Not according mm-hmm. to the prosecution. Well, that's or what the they, defense. I mean, the, the fact is, yeah. no, no, because they think the prosecution. The defense said that the concrete was a weapon. Yeah, but the, the defense and, and what the defense had to prove was that he felt in danger of his life. Yeah. He felt that way. Right. We're talking about the facts. You know, yeah. when you look at the injuries, I look at the injuries and I say, yeah, he got his head smacked on the concrete, but I think that ultimately if there hadn't been a gun involved, I think he... You've probably you know, been in worse fights on your own time. I think probably this that week? could happen. So, so it gets back. So I get back. <laughs> Down at the tavern? <laughs> right. I get back. He's on edge. So I get back I mean, to the gun thing. I get back to the gun thing. If he doesn't have the weapon, this doesn't happen. I agree. Uh, Oscar's right. If he doesn't get out of the car, this doesn't happen. Well, if, if You're right, too. You know We're what? both right. Yeah. It's how far back you go, Oscar. If George Zimmerman's parents never met, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> no, I mean, no, you can, no. How many steps no. back do you when want to the, go? When a police officer or someone on the phone with authority tells me not to do something, I don't do it. That's right. true. I mean, right. you can't argue that. And, uh, you know, it's it's a tragedy. It just seems that everything we do, it always seems to be a competition. Yep. And uh, the only thing that makes me feel fairly decent about this uh, these people out in the street, it does seem to be not an exclusively black uh, on white situation. I agree there. It does seem that you have a, you know, you have a good number of, of white people that are out in the street protesting this, and if they're protesting the law, that's fine. What I refuse to do is jump on the bandwagon of making a certain individual into a complete and utter racist monster when I have no real evidence to prove that he was that other than what a lot of people have hype this issue up to be. I think he could be. I think he could be a profiler. I think when he makes the comments, they always get away with it. I think he could be talking about African Americans. He, he wanted very to be well might be a hero. I think he want. I think he was a cop wannabe. That's what I'll never ever know. And the whole situation just. I'm sucks glad it's over. when I mean, you talk about that it is uh it's not cut and dry it's not black and white and it's very very competitive right everything in this situation and you know you go back in any news story when it becomes a competition mm-hmm. again that's just an, a sidelight of becoming overly simple right there's not always a winner and there's not always a loser and it's, it's not exactly. a football game and i'm getting back to the fact that uh you know i'm gonna get people to say i am a responsible gun owner i'm, I'm fine with you yeah i'm, I'm a, bless your heart uh, you know, i'm so happy that you are i'm so happy that you've taken training that you teach your eight-year-old how to shoot a weapon the proper way, and you do that, and you do it from the very beginning, and, and terrific, okay? At the same time, there are laws, there are never any new laws that prevent something like this from happening. I don't think a responsible gun owner ought to be able to walk around with a gun in his, in his belt. I don't think so. I think you are predisposed to have the John Wayne mentality if you are out there and oh, doing that. And I you should see. It. Disagree. I'll tell you. I got a, I got an eyewitness account of this. Okay, I'm at the police station going ready for getting ready for my ride along. Right. They were having some sort of gun training course at the police at the police station. Okay. I'm watching these guys roll in. Okay. I'm watching these guys walk into this training session, and I am seeing an awful lot of people that. Let me just say. There were two or three of them that were walking into this uh, this informative class, and I'm right. not sure what they were tr- what they were training on. Maybe they were trying but to get their concealed carry. It concerned me a little bit. Yeah, it worried me just just a little bit. And you know what happened after Newtown was nothing. 
Right. Nothing happened. Nobody in Congress we uh, hoped, did anything for we background hoped. checks or anything like that. And there were plenty of members of the NRA and responsible gun people that wanted us to see some legislation. Mm-hmm. And until we get some sort of legislation, I got news for you, folks. This is not going to be the uh, only incident where a firearm is responsible for somebody dying. And you say, well, it's not the firearm, it's the person. Yes, that's right. It's the person, too. Oh, I, I'll tell you this, that there's probably a guy out there that's kind of like George Zimmerman. Maybe wanted to be right. kind of some sort of law enforcement. Maybe was is retired. Anybody that's in Florida right now that has any inkling of what happened in this case with the stand your ground uh, law would probably sit back and say, "Well, I don't want to put myself in that position. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'm not going to follow the guy. Right. Maybe I'm not going to walk walk uh, into a place where I shouldn't be without any witnesses." We can hope there's a positive yes. pulled from this. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't. And you're going to get people on the other side of the issue too that are going to carry weapons as well. You never mentioned your thoughts. What are you? Fe- how do you personally feel about the uh, stand your ground law? Stand your ground law is uh, is licensed to commit murder. I agree. I think it really is. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's, a, it's 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 ridiculous. When you're you dealing can, with a fact base, yeah, you, prosecution. I feel threatened. You can't do feelings. I feel threatened, so yeah. I can shoot you. Yeah, it's, it's a little scary to me. I mean, I, I I don't. You know, I, I have to agree well, with. Need to eyeball that thing. Uh, okay. If it is the law, I mean, that's part of it. But it seems like a stupid. Trayvon sense. Martin related tweet from New York Giants wide receiver Victor Cruz. Uh, let me see. After George Zimmer was found guilty, Cruz tweeted. Uh, let me see. Thoroughly confused. Zimmerman doesn't last a year before the hood catches up to him and uh he later apologized for that tweet and uh roddy white also quoted all them jurors should go home tonight and kill themselves for letting a grown man get away with killing a kid lots of high emotions we'll come back on the michael Mara show Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Summertime gift headquarters, everybody. Where Fun time. The toys of summer. I don't think you can buy a gun on Amazon. No, but you know what you can <laughs> buy? Buy yourself a pool noodle. Right. Get a pool noodle on Amazon. Pool noodle. Oh, those are those styrofoam things. They're fun for summer fun. You will find the toys of summer in Amazon's great outdoor sales event today and every day. Save money and support the show. Click Amazon at MikeO'MaraShow.com and Bookmark it. Yeah. Dano. Print it. Take uh, it to the big man. So I read those uh, tweets from uh, Victor Cruz, yeah. and I, I got a theory on that as well. Thoroughly confused. Zimmerman doesn't last a year before the hood catches up to him. He quickly deleted that tweet and replaced it with an apology. He said, quote, I believe conversation, not confrontation, leads to change in progress. I never have and never will advocate violence under any circumstance. I apologize. As a father, I want my daughter to grow up in a country that uses this tragedy to heal and grow and progress i agree with victor cruz's apology and i hope he's uh, from the heart when he says oh, that high emotions because and high emotions because i think when this type of event happens we don't really think of these people as, as human beings as much as we think of it as a competition this goes back to the oj trial mm-hmm. i feel the same way about yeah. it. it's totally different circumstances they become characters but they become and it's my team and your team and when we're waiting for the verdict and then uh, rob i think you said when they had the press conference afterwards it was like a post uh post football game yeah. press conference yeah and it really it's a competition because we're a hyper-competitive society. Right. There's so many laws, I think, that should be addressed as far as, uh, you know, a kid walking back home uh, who felt uh, that somebody was following him. And there's so many, you know, gun laws. We just don't seem to want to change. We just are going to let this stuff happen, and it's going to happen again, and we're going to argue. Tough. And if there's a villain and somebody that we can point at, it's not me, but it's you, then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and nothing's going to change, and I don't know. I'm still going to start talking about it. I still think we have to talk about it because I feel so bad when we were riding our motorcycles through uh, Newtown, Connecticut, very close to, about 45 minutes away from uh, where I grew up, and I thought about the fact, hmm, gee, nothing happened. Nothing happened as far as mental health. Nothing happened as far as background checks. Nothing happened as far as guns. And that didn't happen because the people that we elect are so terrified of losing their jobs, and right. that's really why nothing happens. I mean, it doesn't even get there. Doesn't there, there? Can't even be a discussion about it of any significance because the gun lobby is so powerful. And I'm not talking about uh, you know taking away guns. I'm talking about the fact that the gun lobby doesn't want anything to go through because if they if they see that go through, they they are worried that like so many people say, you can never take my guns. 
And I don't think any reasonable person but thinks that laws, if they make a few background check laws, no, no, I actually laws, agree with that. That, that people are going to have their guns. Taken. I think that the gun lobby sees any sort of uh, allowance made as almost an admission of guilt. But right. again, gentlemen, we talked about this when this happened. That, and you called it, Mike, when mm-hmm. that, when we actually when Newtown was on the. I'm talking about two weeks after when the president finally stood up and said something. Right. Right. You said. This is going to be a tough battle mm-hmm. because the gun lobby is so so powerful and brilliantly uh, positioned strategically. You know, yes, where they lay low and they wait. And and listen, I also I have to say this. You admire month, that? Why can't we do that on all sides? One hundred percent. I I believe. Pro and against. This mm-hmm. is not the only issue. Right. Yeah. The only issue is not uh, firearms. Absolutely not. Because even the way we we deal with each other racially in this country, and I don't feel like we've made any real progress. We're afraid to talk about it in a in a rational way, but we're real quick to take sides. Mm-hmm. We love we love to do that. It, that might be getting better. And the though. system, just like we said, that there there's certainly something wrong with the stand your ground law. But the system, right. and this is not just for the gun law. And Florida is kind of a yeah. wide open state as far as gun laws. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There are a lot of laws lobby groups for a lot of different industries that have this type of power mm-hmm. that don't get this much press. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all so over the So the system place. in itself... Is, is broken. Is broken. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, and you could talk all day long. And I hate to get heavy, but it's on everybody's oh, mind. It's got to. And when I watch this coverage and I see it all, uh, you know, and, and really, ultimately, a horrible situation. Yeah. And, 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 um, and would you agree about 20 different ways... You could prevent it from happening. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. You know, twenty. If in general, yeah. if in general, you know, you could go, you could go as far as just the the way our whole society is constructed, and we could make if we mm-hmm. make real significant progress. You know, where there, it's it just sucks. And it's I, so sad. And it's I, such a tragedy. And I also don't know how I'd react as a teenager. And I'm not saying Trayvon Martin was in the, was in the wrong or right. Look, again, we'll never really know what happened that no, night. No, we never will. Uh, but if if I was a teenager. And somebody stopped me as I'm like walking through my neighborhood and said, it's right. "Freeze, neighborhood watch." Mm-hmm. I, I kind of, I kind of laughed to be honest with you at first because right. I'd, I'd say we're in only Maryland. Uh, I'm just my parents live right there. Yeah. I'm going home. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you know it was that futuristic society where we could actually know, actually know what the exchange was? Yes. What you was go back. said? Yeah. We never like will. a minority report. Let's even yeah. Let's even assume that uh, you know when they showed that animation of Trayvon Martin standing in front of Z- Zimmerman and he hits him in the in the head. Yeah. Let's just assume what was said at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I know if I'm getting followed and I'm in my neighborhood and I'm 17, and you, can, you can see your house. Yeah, I'm, I'm older. And you know what? Let's let's speak to this a little bit. Don't you feel more empowered if you're yes, close to your you house? Too? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, who are you? I, I live I, here. I live right here. Yeah. Yeah. And that might have, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's ridiculous. There's it's, too many factors, and we are really, honestly, we're too far removed from it to even true. conjecture. Yeah. There are people there that were actually at the trial that don't know. Mm-hmm. How are we going to know? Well, enough of that. I think we covered it, and it's sad, and it's a tragedy, and I'd love to see a million different laws change, not just guns, not just, uh, you know, civil rights laws, not just the, the way people think about each other in this country, which contributed to that, I'm sure, on mm-hmm. some level. I'd just like to see everything. I, I just, I'd like to see everything get fixed, and yeah. it's sad. And sometimes we're... We're a sad country. I think you're probably, more peaceful. I think you're more sensitive to it because you're bringing one in. Yeah, I you know. Uh, I mean, this oh, is probably yeah. not a thought you would have had two years. We ago. love violence. We love games yeah. that have guns in them. I do. I, I'm part of it. I've grown up watching. I love Goodfellas. I love The Godfather. Yeah. I love violence. I love violence. I'm a pure American. I've right. grown up on violence. I love it. I've been in fist fights before. Good news we're, for your son. We're a violent people. We are. We're a violent people. I know we are. We are. And and that's the way. And maybe that's the. Maybe we all got to calm down a little. Mm. I don't know. Uh, there's so many. Uh, Possible discussions we could have about this could go sure on for enough. 10 hours. But we're here to uh, not only entertain you, but apologize Let's to you. Let's start the show. I would like to apologize to my compatriots here. And uh, Oh, and incidentally, by the way, all the people that are going to do the gun thing to me, please stop. I, I don't want. I don't want to hear it. You know what? I, I, I think... understand that you are law abiding, and I understand that you are. <laughs> you you have your guns, and I understand you love your guns. Right. And cow cow cowboy cowboy boom boom. I, that's fine. I, I suggest don't send me, don't there are send so me many the... lovely people within the sounds of our voices mm-hmm. right now. Please let Mike have the week. Yeah. He's got a lot of yeah. things. Got on Got a mind. baby coming. As, As you know, know we I... be the week of the royal birth. The world excitedly awaiting. I know, I know you know how to shoot, and I know yes. you were taught by your dad, or you're going to teach your right. kid. I know you're fine. You're fine with that. And also, hey, here's something. I'll throw the bone to, to all our gun lover oh, loving people. Don't count. Maybe, hey, you know who knows? Maybe someday I'll buy one too.
Oh, you know, really? I'm two break-ins away from uh, buying the gun. Me too, Mike. Right, thank you. Uh, Let's go gun shopping together. I would like to apologize to Oscar and to Rob. Why? What's that? I have stolen from both of you. Oh, again, what's going on? I have stolen from <laughs> you. Mean, I know you are referring, of course, to our hearts. You've stolen my heart. What? Friday uh, evening, 5, 6 o'clock, a package arrived, and uh, I'm keeping it. Oh, it, it, oh, it was a here. gift? It was a gift for all of us. Okay. Uh, hi, Mike and crew. I hope this wine finds you well. Oh, you, this mm, is the beginning. You know I what? Remember I remember this. I've I got heard, an email about this. I've heard things after this package yeah. arrived. Everything's coming together. This is almost like Pulp Fiction, Oscar. Yeah, I got a heads up on this package, and in my mind I said, Mike's not going to steal this from us. Mike's just going to enjoy it and tell us all about it. In my head, before this happened, before I knew this happened, I said, there's no way we get this. This is a story being told out of sequence. <laughs> this is complete premeditated theft. Yeah. It's this not is, theft. Th it's this not is theft. You, know, you are guilty of wine slaughter. I, I, I saw it. I was taking it out. It was Friday night, and I was removing it. I said, I'm not giving this to either one of them. <laughs> I, I made a point. Of, I said it before the, the first bottle was even opened, before I even knew that it was great wine. Multiple bottles. Bottles. multiple bottles? Oh, a case. You killed a case? Twelve bottles. I didn't kill a case of wine. No, it's he's still in the here. process of oh, killing okay. it. Hey, Pony, there's a, it's out in the uh, in the den. Go, go grab a yeah. bottle. Bring how, one of the how bottles. Many, you're going to so hold up look at it. How many yes. bottles did you uh, premeditate? Uh, let me write that. Down. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, interested to know. Let me write that down for you. It's because what? I, don't, I still don't think it's stealing. This I think is it's, Friday night. I think you're going to pay it for Can I read the letter before I give you that? Please do. Sure. Please do. <laughs> Dear Mike and crew, I hope this wine finds you well. I am very late to the world of podcasting, but after rediscovering your show about two months ago, I have already devoured every iTunes archive podcast and all 137 bonus shows. Good for you, man. Thank Downloading you. your show is the first thing I do every morning. Well, maybe the second thing. of your show via the Sacramento affiliate for what must be close to 20 years now. That's about right. I can't even imagine how many hours I've spent listening to you while working in the winery and vineyard over the years. Oh, yeah. Now, this is California. I just watched Sideways a couple of weeks oh. ago. I'm so excited. I'm getting more excited when I see the box. Do you think this guy looks like Paul Giamatti? I've seen, uh, there's a picture of him. Oh, okay, good. Uh, and that's on his little brochure. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have added much enjoyment to my days, and I'm so thrilled to have found you again. Great to hear about the updates in your lives and have enjoyed meeting Oscar as well. Keep up the great work. And this comes from Ooh. Elliot Graham, winemaker from the Busby Cellars Vineyard and Winery in Somerset, California. How nice you, that friend. Matt Bloom has brought in a partial bottle of wine. <laughs> Not a lot. This would be what is left from three bottles. Oh. Wow. What is yes, sir. Was it a variety pack or was it all one variety? Variety pack. And So what is that? Is that a cab? This is called, uh, let me see. Nice, nice packaging. I think it's called Thank you. Barbera or it's Fairplay. I'm not sure. Is Johnny it, Fairplay is it named after John Dalton. <laughs> there are several varietals that are in there, and uh, they are absolutely ducky. Can I smell it? Uh, I promise not to drink it. The 2010 Barbera, which is just off the hook. Excellent acidity and soft, silky tannins. Make this a great wine for the dinner table. Do you remember when you were silky tannins on the jazz station? <laughs> <laughs> silky tannins. Get in there. Is there a love song you'd like to hear? He was like Glenn Hollis before Glenn Hollis yeah. was Glenn Hollis. Yeah, start pouring this wine in a glass. I'm silky tannins. And we'll be here till, till midnight. That's right. Do you have a, a loved one that broke it off with you? Silky tannins can make you. Anyway, bright cherry fruit characteristics with smoky notes and vanilla flavor. I was smoky notes. I had the shift after I'm you. I'm going to do you a solid. Yeah? What's I'm going to do you a solid, Mr. What? Michael Merrick. What's that? You, do, you are uh, a, a truly, truly charitable man. You're a kind guy. Mm -hmm. You do not steal from us. Yes. Mm. That, is, that, is a, that is a solid. That was a mistake on your part. We need another case. Yes! Yeah, another I, case. I think you're right. And this case will it's be... so good. This case will be given to myself and yes. Rob Spiewak. Very not good. at all. Yes. But just in case it does... That's yes. right. Because you know try. why, Oscar? Because you and I feel slighted. 
<laughs> do either one of you, in all your travels, do either one of you enjoy a glass of uh, red wine once in a while? Of course. You yes, do? why oh, yeah. not? So you both would like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, It's please. so good. All right, so anyway. It's so good. It, <laughs> wow, thanks, Mike. It's just so good. <laughs> send another, I'm send another case. Boy, Wait. I want to tell you guys, um, Oscar, if you like wine, you would have loved it before I drank oh, it. Oh, thank you. Friday Ooh, night, sure. I'm ready I'm ready to have some wine. There, another some piece of puzzle is going to fall Friday night. night. So <laughs> yeah. it was is so it just Fridays fantastic. now? It was, well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's once a week. And Friday night was my night. What did you do Saturday? So good. Uh, really, just uh, did a honey do list from Carla, Aww. and uh, did all change light bulbs, uh, put some stuff up in the baby's room. No saw your light. I took out all the trash that we have from all the boxes that come in all Aww. week with her. Saw Amazon your light bulb stuff. stick out. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's you the, got worst. the high ceiling. <laughs> I got to take that big stick with the suction cup on it. And I got to go up there. That is the worst. I, th- I had a Napoleon moment because I'm do? sitting there and I'm uh, unscrew. You have to unscrew the bulb. Right. And the highest one in the kitchen that I'm reaching up with my stick. Yeah. And I, I sit there and I hear this. Oh no! All of a sudden, it's, the whole socket is hanging out. Yeah. And I give my Napoleon. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh but no! It sucked. But I want. Did you say, were you able to put the socket back? Uh, no. Oh. I can't get up there. You're gonna have to call a handyman. I know. Yeah. I know. I got. <laughs> and then I, I, I want to call a handyman for that and the window that Josh broke and didn't tell anybody mm. about. It. Um, yeah, I was gonna tell you about that. <laughs> I just noticed it. <laughs> I, I didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. It's one day, like months later. I of course. Like, hey, look, the the whole window's shattered. Yeah, that's yeah. because you know what happened. People don't know what right. Josh does during the show. If he's right. not sitting in, he's actually in your dining room playing with a BB gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, Throwing rocks. what I did was I broke the window, <laughs> and I didn't tell you that I broke the window, and so the window's broken. What are the, you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> you broke the poor window. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a poor guy. Uh, He's just challenged. May I make this statement? And, yeah. and I want to get... Uh, I mean, this is this is not serious like George Zimmerman said. We want a second case. This is... What's that? Of wine. Yeah. A second case. Okay, so... Uh, and also, Oscar and I forgive you. Yeah, we Thank forgive you. Thank you. Yeah, because, Elliot, as I said, Mike gets the week off. Yeah. A, cele- a celebratory case. Elliot Graham from the Busby Cellars Vineyard and Winery. The greatest winery in uh, California. Ah. Uh, send a case to uh, yeah. to Rob and uh, Oscar. Yeah. Please, please, please. It's so good. Just one case. Care of Oscar it. the DJ. There's please. like not a bad bottle in the whole case. It was so good. Yeah, but you'll, but you'll keep hunting for that bad bottle. Yeah, All sure week will. long. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe tonight. Not sure. <laughs> I want to make a statement here. Good. And I'm very, very serious about it when I make this statement. I... I actually had tears in my eyes on Friday night, and someone in this room is going to be very, very surprised about it. Rob Spiewak, empty bottle of wine, <laughs> was so excited on Friday for the Paul McCartney concert. Yeah, and Oscar and I actually talk about you a lot, as far as Oscar says it probably more than I do about how good a father you are. Oh yeah, yeah and I'm it. just going to say this: I hate it. There were a few posts of you and your son, and. My my dear friend Tony Perkins uh, and his mom, and you all went out to the concert together. I was thinking about you Friday night, uh, probably after my third bottle of wine yes. began. And I <laughs> but was the thinking, beginning of the third bottle, Rob. I you literally so hard. my thoughts, and I, I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound like a you know, like I want to sleep with you or anything. But do you? My thoughts were with you as I drifted off to sleep with my wine buzz yeah. on Friday night, and I was thinking this, and this is exactly what I wanted to say. Didn't want to call you. I didn't want to post it on Facebook. I wanted to come in here and say this on the show. You stop this. You're making me cry. My you know? memories of my relationship with my father are centered around significantly events that we participated in together. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what I hold on to. That's what I remember about my dad. And I was saying to myself, there was a picture of Robert that you posted on Facebook where he had a smile on his face, which was the most genuine, magnificent smile. I remember what you went through with your son and, and, and how you suffered so unbelievably when he had uh, pediatric leukemia. Yeah. And that we are here now where you can take him to, to this event, and I don't even know if you're aware of the fact of what this is going to do for you when you're blowing spit bubbles someday, when you're in a wheelchair you're in gonna some nursing home. You're going to have to stop because I'm going to cry again because I spent most of the concert... I, I counted five times at the concert I cried. The first time I cried was, and I'll collect myself. You, you sprung this on me. I didn't know you were going to do the this. The beer price? It's, it's from no. the heart, Rob. It's no. from the heart. 
when the third song, and I, I have something in the audio vault oh, cool. for people that weren't at the concert, but I think the third song he did was the Beatles song, All My Lovin'. Right. And it was the one song I wanted to hear because it was the first song that Robert ever learned all the words to Aww. when he was a baby. And when Paul launched into it, and I looked and I saw my son screaming his head off at the concert, and I realized this is really what it's all about. You're right. able to provide something for your progeny, your next right. generation, that right. they wouldn't be able to provide for themselves. And we got almost three hours of just pure, unadulterated joy. I'm, I'm, si and I'm surrounded by... He you know, was just... He had such a good time, and I felt on top of the world. I posted something on Facebook that I almost didn't do, mm -hmm. and then I almost put something like, Mike's going to give me S for this. Mm -hmm. But I posted it anyway because it w I felt it so much. It was three in the morning on Saturday. I'd come home from the concert, and I couldn't go to bed. And I posted... On Friday. Yeah. Oh, so three, so I, three going Saturday into the morning. next day, I wrote... I don't want to go to bed right. because that means tonight is over. Yeah, it, was, it was the best night of my life. He, you know, whether you know it or not, and you may, you may know, know this, you may not. Your, you know, my memories. I still remember the events that I shared with my dad. I remember the fact that my dad brought me the Boston Red Sox. It's what the father son thing is kind yeah. of uh, like. My dad brought me Buddy Rich. Came home from uh, the office one day and threw out this album and said, "You might like this." And uh, <laughs> we ended up staying up till eleven o'clock, which was really like. Three in the morning Should've for been us, three, yeah. and you know those are the memories that I have. And I was saying, oh my God, Robert the Third, he doesn't even know it yet. He's going to remember these things, these trips to the wrestling, these trips to King's Dominion, these trips. And you know what? You're not a, a pushover, Dad, by any stretch of the imagination, because mm -hmm. people think that it's all you know uh, this little. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not because I've seen you. We've seen him be a disciplinarian because yeah. he does. He doesn't take crap from his kids. No, they're good. He kids. doesn't. They're good, they're good kids. kids. And at the same time, though, this is just uh, you know one of the things I love about uh, working with you guys is the way you pay attention to your family members. That is, if we have one thread that is uh, that we have in common, the three of us that are here now doing this show, yeah. it is the fact that you know. You pay a lot of attention to your mom and dad. Yeah. You make lots of jokes about it, but you are constantly there. As a yep. matter of fact, in your family, I know this for a fact, because of your proximity, but also because of the way you care about them, Oscar, you're the one that is always taking care of your mom right. and dad, yeah. especially your mom, and you're doing it all the time. Robert's the same way with his family and, and doing this and being around his family. And it is really, at the end of the day, this little radio show is fine, but that's what really matters. Right. And right. it's one of the greatest sources of frustration for me that I don't have it because I'm not because of the there. proximity and the proximity but has always killed me. You call her every day. I call her no, the, once a month. You're there uh, all the time. I call her once in a while. But uh, uh, periodically. Yeah. Your words could not be any warmer. Thank you. Yeah, Mark. it was I, yeah. genuinely appreciated. And tomorrow I want to get a full update on every detail of that concert. I will, I've got a little something in the audio vault to set the table. Awesome. But I will tell you some funny things about Mr. Tony Perkins. Not exactly the way he is on TV. No, I've known that for longer than you. Anyway, we'll take a break. Come back with news you may not need on the Mike O'Mara Show. With shoes that cut and eyes that burn like cigarettes. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of the program is brought to you by Weight Not. Healthy weight loss just got more affordable. Now there is a range of Weight Not programs that will fit most any budget. Weight Not plans start as low as $5 a day. That is about the cost of a gym membership, and you can accelerate your weight loss based on the pace you like and your budget. With Weight Not, you'll eat the real, natural foods you can find in any grocery store. No package meals, no meal replacements, no prescriptions, no stimulants, nothing artificial. It is the safe way to lose weight and keep it off. Weight Not has helped thousands. Do me a favor. Go to Facebook. They have a Facebook page and you can find out all about the success stories and more importantly, the way people on Weight Not can tailor their program to what they like and how they live. Mike, that's why it works for everybody. Right. Because there is something for everybody. Yes, you try is. it, you will lose weight, and please send us your your success stories. I know you guys are out there. We'd love to share your success. To find out more, visit WaitNot.com. Wait Not, show us what you are made of, everybody. From around the globe, across the nation, looking through your neighbor's window, the Mike O'Mara Show now presents Pills You May Not Need. A comprehensive look at the stories you may or may not be talking about during your daily activity. And now, news you may not need. 
Yo, yo, ladies and gentlemen, I talked about it before. We'll uh, give it to you again. Right. Calls for the uh, Justice Department to look into the shooting death of Trayvon Martin reverberated as soon as Zimmerman was acquitted of state charges in a Florida courtroom. But it may be even tougher to mount a federal case against him. The department says it's reviewing evidence to determine whether criminal civil rights charges are warranted. Uh, do you see that happening? No, I don't, no, think I don't it's either. Happen. I think this is going to, uh, you know, it's frustrating for everybody that uh, disagreed with the verdict, but I think it's going to fade away. But eventually. also, anyone who says this guy got off scot free he's going to have a pretty rough go of it i think oh I think absolutely he's going to have, and the rest of his life is going to be uh definitely changed medical examiners will conduct an autopsy monday on glee actor Corey monteith staffers at the uh, fairmont pacific rim hotel in vancouver canada discovered the 31 year old actor's body in his hotel room saturday after he missed his uh, checkout time police said uh, while the cause of death was not immediately apparent police have ruled out the possibility of foul play this is him singing and you know what? Say what you will about the show. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, you old queen. I don't watch it. Oh, you don't? But he's a good singer. He, yeah. was. he was. You think uh, he just... All the video I've seen of the guy and... Uh, well, he has a history of drug about abuse. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah, a teen. His, I mean, yeah. even at 19, it, like, he had, a, he went to rehab. And usually point. when somebody's that young and, and those circumstances and he's been out that night, you never know. He had just gone to... He, was, he had just left in April for rehab again. So who knows? Uh, how about that. Right. We'll have to wait and see. Ajiana announced Monday that it will sue a San Francisco TV station that had said damaged the airline's reputation. We talk about lazy local news. This is the classic example it about is. this. Uh, if you have had your head in the sand, you might not be aware of the fact that uh, they had the racist I can fake play it names if of you the want. Pilots. I can play it now if you but want. Play the clip for okay, me. This is like, it's KTVU, I think. KTVU in Fox, San Francisco. San Francisco right. yeah. We have new information now. Also on the plane crash, KTVU has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong. We too low, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ao. The NTSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board Flight 214 when it crashed. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing. You know, uh, I if you're that watching that broadcast, though, you scream. And you're still, it's <laughs> you're it's like, just you're the so thing hot. is. This is How this is get on TV? this speaks to local news. There's yeah. you know sometimes they just Did you hear the confirmation policy they described? I'm not sure. They called the uh, NTSB for and, confirmation. And they got a summer intern. An intern. An intern who he said, said, "Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those are the right names." Yeah. This is the right name. It's you, okay. Yeah, they called Josh Murphy. <laughs> did you hear? Did you read uh, Patton's tweet about it? No. He said that they're very upset, and the uh, this came from the uh, spokesman from Asiana Airlines, Miso Sali. That's just you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, and I guess people are getting sued. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Well, we've got a couple of great apologies in the vault. You'll enjoy right. from Ron Burgundy. Okay. <laughs> Apple Incorporated is investigating an accident. You might not have heard about this, where a Chinese woman was killed by an electric shock when answering a call on her iPhone 5 while it was charging. Uh, US, oh, that's a not good. No. Last Thursday, Mai Eilun, a 23-year-old woman from China's western Xinjiang region and a flight attendant with China Southern Airlines, was electrocuted when she took a call on the charging mobile telephone. We are deeply saddened to learn of this tragic incident and offer our condolences to the Ma family. We will fully investigate and cooperate with authorities in this matter, Apple said in an email. Apple declined to comment on details such as whether this was an isolated case. Jeez. I mean, there it is. Figure it out. See what you want to do. It's kind of strange. The only reason I don't answer when I'm charging is because I have to get so close to the table. But now that it's going to threaten my life, perhaps I will rethink it even more. Or it's downstairs in a studio. As <laughs> long as there have been, <laughs> yeah. as long as there have been uh, cell phones, you know, whether it's the brain tumor, whether it's exploding and causing fires, you hear about this periodically. Yeah. I think any electronic device that is attached to a house or a plane or a boat, if it's, say, hit by lightning, yeah. a charge can it probably can go. go through that conduit. Yeah. Pony, what's the voltage that's carried on a USB when you're charging from your computer? It's only five volts. That's super low. Yeah. Five volts. So, yeah. the, so that wouldn't do I would do say it. it's the wiring in that the house. Chinese wiring. No, no. Hey, no, hey, come on. It's the no. Chinese, stop, Mike. Stop, that you are... Ah! 
Yeah. You are horrible. It might have been a bad Stop outlet. It. A bad outlet. Stop it. That's not outlet. right. Uh, anyway. Go to the outlet mall. <laughs> this is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is embarrassing for all men in America. Well, that's good news. On Friday, and it speaks to our good friends out in Iowa, Oh, the I Iowa Supreme Court ruled on a case where a 53-year-old dentist in Fort Dodge... <gasps> You're kidding. That's where Carrie's dad lives. ...named James Knight... Does anybody have the night, uh, Dr. Knight, work on them? I, I will have to check because he lives in a, like a city that's only like 10 miles away from there. Well, you know what he did? No. This hump? What? He fired his attractive female assistant, 33-year-old Melissa Nelson. James says he fired Melissa because he was worried he might try to cheat on his wife with her. Oh, another guy? Jesus. I mean, what a dick. <laughs> And why would you even tell her, this is why I'm firing you? I know. He said he had a, quote, irresistible attraction to her. Is it wow. both ways? I mean, it's so Probably ridiculous. Not. So she sued him for sex discrimination. Well, she should. But the Iowa Supreme Court ruled that it wasn't. How and come? that it was legal. Chief Justice Steve Bridges said, yeah, it's okay. Ah. Yeah, let it go. They I said nobody's the, paying. the firing wasn't sex discrimination since this decision was based on feelings, not gender. What? Uh, it's It does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. That is weird. Man. Every member of the Iowa Supreme Court is male. Melissa's attorney said the court's decision was a horrible blow to gender equality, which I totally agree with. Yeah. Quote, now men can protect themselves from sexual harassment claims simply by firing women they've been harassing. Uh, you what know, she really? cry about? And I was going to say. <laughs> Just go to the bar and get your free drinks. <laughs> Oscar Santana, ladies and gentlemen. A job. horrible blow could have saved her job. That's... <laughs> <laughs> God, that's just a thought. You're both going to hell. I'll see you there. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, nobody's paying. Yeah, well, <laughs> got a fire time Wang. Have you ever caught a uh, foul ball? Either one of you ever catch foul ball in a ball game? It's one of my biggest oh. fears is to get beamed in the face by a foul ball. <laughs> Even though you keep on bringing your mitt to the stadium, which looks ridiculous for my someone your age. Both my mitts. Prepare to hate <laughs> this guy. Why? Greg Neal is a season ticket holder with the Cleveland Indians. I'm so glad it's Cleveland. And during yesterday afternoon's game between the Indians and Kansas City Royals, he caught, are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, not one, not two, not three, four foul balls. Jeez. God, was it an abandoned stadium? <laughs> four foul Jesus. balls. Jesus. Ran through sections. <laughs> yeah. hello, hello, hello. He caught them all. Uh, the fourth one, by the fourth one, he was so over it that he just tossed the ball to some fans in another section. Incidentally, when I got one at an Orioles game, That's I cool. handed it to the kid in back of me. It was the yeah. only one I That's caught. Right. And the kid was named R.J. Diaz. <laughs> According... <laughs> thanks, Mike. <laughs> According to the people... I wanted the, another one, but at, thanks. At the ESPN show, Numbers Never Lie, the odds of one fan catching four foul balls Balls during one major league baseball game are about one in one trillion. Wow. Yeah, pretty amazing. And uh, now a little something, something cool. for all of you. Last week, 30 year old Geneva Little of Orlando, Florida. <laughs> was supposed to be babysitting a four-year-old boy and a five-year-old boy while their father was in jail. And when she went to visit him in jail, she brought the kids with her. Of course. But she left the two boys locked in the car in 89-degree weather. Oh, oh, no. In the jail parking lot. Oh, no. <laughs> God. It took almost half an hour, but a jail employee eventually did see the kids in the car and called 911. The boys were hungry and thirsty. Why would you call 911 before you broke a window? Uh, For God's sake. Maybe they were doing it all simultaneously. Get a break. Get a brick. Uh, outside of being hungry and thirsty, the boys were okay. Uh, Geneva is uh, facing child neglect charges. There's no word on why the boy's father was in jail, and uh, we'll see if Geneva goes there as well. That will all uh, depend on whether or not there's a... Geneva conviction. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Monday. I apologize so, uh, for the I like bad that. Monday joke. You know, I was going to say, you know, she's in town going to the Geneva convention, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just sorry. I loved it. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the audio vault right after this, everybody. Just a small town girl living in a lonely Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of our program is brought to you by Encore Insurance Services, LLC, the people who bring you this show every weeknight on 102.9 WTNT. 
For a free life insurance quote, visit SmartTerm.com or call 866-347-5748. They'll do all the work for you. Encore will compare rates to help you save. License and disclaimer info at SmartTerm.com. Be sure and thank them for sponsoring TMOS Encore Insurance Services at SmartTerm.com. Let's open it up for Monday, July 15, 2013. Rob Spiewak. Thank you, Mike. Now, tomorrow I will tell you about my adventures with the great Tony Perkins at the Paul McCartney concert. You guys, uh, those pictures were great. You look like you're having a good time. It was the time of my life. Everybody in the world has the set list, including myself. But what no one has done is prepared you the songs that Paul played. So I put together a montage. If you were not at the concert, indulge me this tape. This is the set list of everything he played. And I think... I know. Go for your swim. Last time, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that after you hear this, you will wish you were there. So if you missed the concert, Mike, and you were not there, these are the songs you missed Friday night at Nationals Park. Eight days a week, take me down to Junior's Park. Take me down to me. All my love, darling, I'll be true. So won't you listen to what? Tony must have been floating out of his mind. Oh, no, the long and winding road, baby, I'm amazed to where you love me all the time. I've just seen a face. We can work it out. It's just another day, and I love her. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Oh, my favorite. You were here today. Eleanor Rigby, for the benefit of Mr. Kite, there will be a show tonight on trampoline. Something in the way she knows. Wow. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Say, live and let die. And any time you feel the pain, hey, Jude, refrain. First on floor. Second encore. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Thank you for your indulgence. It was 38 songs, two hours, 43 minutes. All right. I, you know, that is, that's not a hit list. That's a smash hit list. I and mean, that, it was that's a, just, I mean, were you uh, just uh, blown away by the quality of the, the songs? I mean, he really did. Fourth uh, time I've seen him, best set list ever. That's it was incredible. just amazing. And every I loved time, every one of those songs. Every time you thought there was something that he wasn't going to do, it happened. It happened. It Almost happened. worth the, uh, like, $1 million per ticket that 1. they were charging $1.2 <laughs> million dollars per ticket. Pretty, yeah. pretty amazing stuff. And Tony, I mean, uh, were, were there more Beatles songs in the uh, list? A pretty than even mix, okay. I think. Uh, pretty that's pretty cool. typical, but uh, man, it was a great show. Just uh, fantastic. Cool. Cool. Um, we talked about those names in San Francisco. I want to play the apology from the anchor, uh, <laughs> Frank Somerville. On KTVU <laughs> in uh, San Francisco. This is just so local news. He's they don't very, sweat very the details. Sorry. Tonight we want to take a moment and say that we are sorry. Earlier today, during our new newscast, we misidentified the pilots in the Ashiana Airlines crash. We made several mistakes when yes. we received this information. I'm Ron First Burgundy. of all, we never read the names out loud, <laughs> phonetically sounding them out. Then during our phone call to the NTSB, where the person confirmed the spellings of the names, 
We never asked that person to give us their position within the agency. Because it was intern Josh Murphy. <laughs> it was a summer intern. <laughs> That's right. And Mike knows them. You Come beat on. me to it, Mike. You stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> I'm on Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking about it the whole time. Now, Mike, the name, oh, it's a great name, Dr. Stuart Finkelstein. <laughs> or is it Finkelstein? Uh, he was uh, recently at the uh, deposition for whether Michael Jackson was wrongfully deathed. Right. I, that's not the problem. His wrongful death Wrongful death suit. Death suit wrongfully deathed. He was wrongfully deathed, right. Mike. Right. Um, they brought up some interesting facts that uh, I did not Sorry. know about that. Here's uh, Dr. Stu Finkelstein. I attempted to give him a shot of Demerol. But his buttocks was um, so scarred up and abscessed that the needle almost bent. <laughs> and was Mr. Jackson oh, conscious during this time? Yes. We were watching Three Stooges and having squirt gun fights. He had so much scar tissue on his ass from needles that it bent the syringe. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah wow. Bad. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, this I, I played this mostly because it's cute and because no one was hurt. A little girl saved her mom's life. She called 911 when mom was choking. She was old enough to understand that it was 911, but she assumed that she was calling her daddy for help. Oh. But she did save her mom's life. Nobody's hurt, but this is just cute. Daddy? Hello? Daddy, mommy's choking. She's choking? Yeah, she can't talk right now. Okay, she can't talk? No. Okay, can you can you open the front door and I'll get help over to you? Okay. All right, open the front door. I'll be right there. Love you. Bye. I love oh, the fact wow. that she ends it with "I love you." She called Daddy, right? She no, she called nine one one. Nine one one. But she was assumed, Daddy. She thought it was Daddy. That's oh, who's gonna help. Her. And she, she, she thought she, it was Daddy. Yeah. She thought it was Daddy. Oh, that's cute. But you know what? Mom mm -hmm. is all right. Little girl's a hero, and that is your magic audio <laughs> ball. Yeah, very good. I like that. Uh, that's it. We got to get out of here. Hey, tomorrow we didn't get to anything today. No. Uh, tomorrow I will talk about my late night drunken conversation with Marcus Serta. Hey, have you ever gotten a bottle of wine that you're supposed to give to Oscar, but uh, you keep it? I'll have an update yesterday about the baby seems to want to stay in the belly yeah and uh more fun and more thrills all that coming up uh, tomorrow our show today was brought to you by our good friends at signs by tomorrow give kevin a call his number is 703-530-0070 or visit signs by tomorrow.com in manassas experience people state-of-the-art technology cost-effective signs by tomorrow of manassas your visual message specialist have a great one we'll be back with another whole show tomorrow for ye. So long, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Now that the show's over, don't forget to sign up for your free trial of Personal Capital right now. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com and click the Personal Capital banner or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Again, click the Personal Capital banner on MikeOmeraShow.com or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs>